Hey, what's going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle coming to you from the Draft.com studios. And we're talking about quarterbacks in this start or sit episode. And as you know, how we do it here on the Fantasy Headliners, complete transparency. Last week, not a great week for me in quarterbacks. I don't think it was for a lot of people. Unfortunately, only hit on 50% of my picks last week. That's all right. Hit 71% on tight ends and overall as a channel, Jake and I both both hit uh, well over 60%. I think it was about 68% or so overall on our starter sit uh, decisions last week. So good week last week. Need to get better though. Need to move forward. We had a lot of performances that may or may not have scared us last week. And let's talk about moving forward. Who are we going to trust? Who will we not trust? Especially when it comes to the quarterback position. Let's get it going. Let's kick it off here. Quarterback starter sit week two. Let's go. All right, first matchup of the week, Tampa Bay Buccaneers headed to the Carolina Panthers. Cam Newton, even though he had a down week last week, still a start for me this week. The Tampa Bay defense is not really great. Yes, San Francisco didn't perform nearly as good as they probably could have last week against the Buccaneers. But with that being said, Jimmy Garoppolo and the receiving weapons that they have there are a lot different than having Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey, having Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore. We'll see what happens at tight end. Uh, Greg Olson is having some issues there in terms of a potential injury and may be out this week. But if not, Ian Thomas will step in. All those things can, being considered, even though it's going to be a Thursday night game, which generally can mean a sloppy game, a lot of turnovers, different things like that, I'll still roll with Cam Newton th- this week just because every time he steps on the field, there's way too much upside, especially with his rushing ability. Now, on the flip side of that, Jameis Winston, I know he got a lot of you last week. He got me last week. I really anticipated that to be a really good matchup. He looked good at times. He looked awful at times. Well, this week, again, on Thursday night football, which can potentially mean a lot of uh, a really sloppy game, a lot of issues. I'm going to go ahead and bench him because the Carolina Panthers really took care of Jared Goff last week, held him in check, held the Rams offense in check, and performed well. So will they do the same thing on a Thursday night against the Buccaneers? I think that in terms of percentages of them doing or kind of having the same performances they did last week is much higher than not. So we're going to roll with Jameis Winston on our bench this week, but Cam Newton, go ahead and put him in your lineup. Too much upside to leave him on the bench, even for a Thursday night game. San Francisco at Cincinnati is going to bring two starters for me this week. And these are two guys that you could potentially roll with in place of, let's say, a Jameis Winston. If you drafted him to be a quarterback one and you bench him this week, potentially a couple of guys that you can grab here and stream with. Andy Dalton had a pretty good week last week. He actually showed up, played well against Seattle. I thought that that game was going to be a disaster for the Bengals offense, and it really wasn't. He played well. The same thing could happen this week against the San Francisco 49ers. Andy Dalton could have himself another nice performance, at least streamable in a 1QB league. With Jimmy Garoppolo, they also didn't play that bad last week. Now they could have played better, and this is an offense that continues to evolve, but they are going to get better as the season goes on. Don't forget, Jimmy Garoppolo let, missed basically all of last season. Give him some time to get out there and get the rust shaken off. When it happens, when things click, he will be he will be much better than what we've seen so far. So if you have to play him this week, feel more than welcome to. I think that these this is a decent matchup for both of these quarterbacks to at least be in and around the low end quarterback one type area. At the very least, they're going to be high two to or quarterback twos this week. So if you need to put in your lineup, go ahead. Safe picks this week. Not really a ton of upside, but they'll get the job done for you. Well, we just found out literally right before I recorded this episode that Philip Rivers is going to be missing Hunter Henry moving forward. And it also sounds like Mike Williams is banged up right now. So what is going to happen with him having those two weapons out? Honestly, not a whole lot. I I don't care for the Detroit Lions defense. I still don't. I'm a Lions fan. Can they be good? Yes, but they're not going to be overpowering. They're going to be ready to play at home and ready to go. But Phillip Rivers is going to be just fine this week. And Matthew Stafford, who I had as a sit last week, performed very well. Surprised me with his performance last week. Could do the same thing this week against the Chargers. Again, the Lions are at home. First game of the season. That's actually a pretty decent crowd to play in front of, whether you know it or not, even with his best 
Bez the Lions have been. There's a lot of just positive energy in that building when the Lions are at home, even with as bad as they have been. So both of these guys this weekend, I think, will be just fine. Again, maybe limited in upside, but will give you a nice floor in case you need to use one of them to stream for a different option that just won't give you that upside this week. Last week, when the Atlanta Falcons headed into Minnesota, I thought that was going to be a shootout. I thought this was going to be a back-and-forth game, but it turned out that Minnesota just went out there and really put it to the Atlanta Falcons and really didn't need Kirk Cousins all that much. Only 10 passing attempts last week. Now, is that going to happen in Green Bay? More than likely not. However, this Green Bay defense, as we saw last week on Thursday Night Football against the Bears to open up the season... They looked really good. This is a this is a defense that Jake and I were Jake and I were very high on all offseason long. And our draft guide, we have them, we had them as darn near a top 10 defense this year. So I expect a lot of tough matchups again for them this week in Green Bay. Feeling or digs, one of the two will end up getting his, but cousins I just don't trust, especially if they don't let him throw the ball as much and they rely on Dalvin Cook a lot like they did last week. Even Madison got a decent amount of carries last week. So if they focus on the run game, Kirk Cousins could have really limited upside and against the defense this good at home, it really takes away and makes that floor even lower as well. Aaron Rodgers, he's going to be a start no matter what. It would it would take an injury basically at this point for me to bench Aaron Rodgers. He's a guy that you picked as a top three, four quarterback. Roll with him. He'll be fine. Start him in week two. Now as we come to the Colts and the Tennessee Titans, you might be looking at the screen thinking, Kyle, these guys didn't play that bad last week, especially Marcus Mariota. Why are you going to bench him this week? Well, do we really expect Marcus Mariota to play like that every single week? I don't. I still expect him to be mildly inconsistent, and I definitely expect the Colts' defense to be much better this week than it was last week as well. And as we saw with the Tennessee Titans on the road in Cleveland, that defense is no joke. They are really going to make the Colts earn everything that they get this weekend. Jacoby Brissett did a fine job last week, but for fantasy football purposes, he just doesn't have any ceiling right now. Yes, he got T.Y. Hilton a couple of touchdowns. That was excellent to see that that connection there is growing. But outside of that, he just he wasn't great. He was good. He got the job done. And just for football purposes, that's excellent. That's exactly what he needed to do. However, from a fantasy football perspective, when we need to score a lot of points to win, he just isn't going to get that done this week. I also believe Marcus Mariota is going to see a little bit, I don't want to say worse of a performance, but a performance that not, is not nearly up to what we saw last week. Don't expect those week one standards every single week from Mariota until he proves on a consistent basis. Unless the matchup is really good for him, I'm probably going to leave him on the bench. Plain and simple, put Tom Brady in your lineup. That's it. That's all I have to say here, right? No. Okay, so we got a little bit more to talk about. Well, Tom Brady, yeah, he's going to be in your lineup. We saw what happened last week. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens just went in and pummeled the Miami Dolphins last week. But that's all right. Tom Brady's going to get his this week. I st- we still don't know if Antonio Brown will be on the field or not, but regardless of that, they're still going to perform more than more than well. Tom Brady is one of my top quarterbacks this week, probably at least a top five, if not top three for me, so he's definitely in your lineup. For the Miami Dolphins, we can't start Ryan Fitzpatrick or Josh Rosen moving forward. As we saw last week, when the game got out of hand, Fitzpatrick came off the field, Rosen went in. Is that going to continue to happen? Are these guys going to split halves? Like what? We don't know what's going to happen with that quarterback position. So even though we know this is going to be a negative game script and whoever the quarterback is is going to be throwing a lot we don't know who the quarterback will be the last thing we want to do is put ryan fitzpatrick in and then find out in the middle of the third quarter because they're getting blown out that they pulled him and put josh rosen in so with that being said we got to sit these two we don't know who's going to be starting or we i mean we do know who's going to be starting we don't know who will be finishing the game and with that being said i don't want to get into the third fourth quarter and find out my quarterback isn't even in the game anymore Forget about those two. Go with Tom Brady, though. He's in for a really good week. Even though the Giants probably were a little bit better than a lot of people anticipated last week, still isn't good enough for me to put Eli Manning in my lineup anytime soon, especially against a Bills defense that was very, very good against the past season, uh, last season, and then even in week one against Sam Darnold, 
was able to really cramp down on some of those guys. I mean, Jameson Crowder. I mean, the guy had double-digit catches and didn't break 100 yards. So that tells you right there how they can just uh, get to the ball carrier, take him down, not give up a lot of yards after the catch. They were able to do that. Now with Josh Allen, I will start him. I thought he was going to be in for a little bit better of a week last week, but if you remember that episode, I told you that there isn't going to be a lot of upside because of that Jets defense being better than what it was. And really, for a majority of the game, they did that to him. He had a couple of picks. He didn't look really good throughout the game. Finally, at the end of the game, he came through and was able to help them get the win. But with that being said, this is a New York Jet, or New York Giants defense that got torched last week by Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Josh Allen could end up doing the same thing this week, especially with his legs. If he were to get rolling a little bit on the ground again, that upside comes back, and then he's a definite play for me in Week 2. I expect the Pittsburgh Steelers to be much better in Week 2 than they were last week. That was a tough assignment on the road. In New England, they were raising a banner, celebrating another Super Bowl. Obviously, there was a lot of hype around that team. But this week at home, now they get their chance to be a little bit more hype. They get the home crowd behind them. A really good matchup against the Seahawks. The Seahawks didn't play nearly as good last week as we would have hoped. Obviously, they've made some changes on defense, and we thought that would make them a little bit better. They weren't. They were good. They weren't great last week, but they were. They were all right. So Pittsburgh, Ben Roethlisberger. I expect him to have a fine week this week. And of course, Russell Wilson. You never set him. Go ahead and roll with him. Tom Brady had a good week against the Steelers last week. Wilson will have a good week this week. Now the passing, the upside might be a little bit limited, as we saw last week. Tyler Lockett only with the one catch. We need to get that offense rolling a little bit more, but still not enough for me to put him on the bench. Both of these guys are in my lineup for week two. So another performance that caught me completely off guard last week was Case Keenum. Now, I'm rooting for the guy. I really am. I I like Case Keenum. I think he can be a fine NFL quarterback. However, he doesn't have the best situation around him right now, and he just lost Darius Geis as well. So what are we going to get from him? This Dallas defense is still a very, very good defense in my opinion. They could have played better last week. They will play much better this week. They're going to get after Case Keenum. He's going to have some troubles this week, I anticipate. Even though he had a great week last week, again, one of those situations like Marcus Mariota, until I see him doing consistently, I can't put him in my lineup, especially in a one-quarterback league. With that being said, Dak Prescott, his counterpart uh, counterpart this uh, this past week, we loved him all offseason, right? Well, I did anyway. A lot of you may not have, but he showed exactly what he can do last week. Expect more of the same this week. Another great week for Prescott incoming. Lamar Jackson is not going to be anywhere near your bench. Regardless of what the format is, he's not going to be anywhere near your bench. Obviously, we're starting Lamar Jackson. Now with Kyler Murray, let's talk about him. I had him I had him as a start last week, so why am I going to sit him, especially after the fourth quarter? Well, he looked great in the fourth quarter. Do not get me wrong. He looked excellent. He was able to lead that team back, get them the tie. That was excellent work on his part. However, he just didn't look good throughout majority of the game until then. And against this Baltimore defense on the road in Baltimore, we could see a lot of the same inconsistencies this week. So even though I like him, I like his upside, I like his potential, especially with his ability to run around and scamper on the ground a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and sit him this week in a hostile environment, especially when the inconsistencies from last week I believe could carry over to this week. Go ahead and roll with somebody else this week. Like I said, if he was your quarterback one, some of the other guys I've talked about in this video is a start that you may not have thought about. You could potentially pick them up and stream them in his place this week. Well, even though some people thought Patrick Mahomes might have a tough assignment last week against a Jacksonville Jaguars team that really could bounce back and be a much better defense than they were last year, that didn't matter a whole lot. Patrick Mahomes still Patrick Mahomes. Yep. Turn that into a verb. Anyway, Patrick Mahomes still did his thing. Expect uh, uh, Deshaun Watson to do a lot of the same. But keep in mind that this, this Houston Texans defense on the road in New Orleans last week really held Drew Brees in check for the entire first half and a little bit of the second half before he finally broke through. A guy like Minshew that we're looking to come in as a rookie and take over and be fantasy relevant I can't do it. Don't worry about it. Even in like a super flex league, I know a lot of people probably picked him up this week because they had Nick Foles. Go ahead and bypass him this week. This is a tough assignment. Even though this defense wasn't going to be nearly as good as I thought to begin the season, they performed well in a very hostile environment last week. Now they get to go home and they get to face a rookie quarterback. Could be a tough matchup. 
I'll tell you who was one of the biggest surprises last week. It was that Oakland Raiders defense at home. Man, were they pumped up to play on Monday night football. Good for them, though. It's been a long week, a long offseason for them. So for them to go out and put up that kind of performance, good on them. Happy for them that they were able to do that. But that's not going to stop Patrick Mahomes and company. Mahomes is going to be just fine. This is going to be a shootout. They're going to have to play from behind. Derek Carr looked just fine last week. This is a defense that can easily be taken advantage of with some big plays. Tyrell Williams, Darren Waller. Maybe we get to see a little Hunter Renfro action this week. Whatever it may be, both of these quarterbacks can be in your lineup safe and sound and will give you a decent performance. Speaking of that game from Monday Night Football with the Oakland Raiders, you know who didn't look good? The Denver Broncos. Expected a lot better performance out of them. And in this game against a very tough Chicago Bears defense, with as bad as they looked against the Raiders, can't start them against the Chicago Bears at all. So put Joe Flacco on your bench. With Mitchell Trubisky, I tell you what. The guy's got to show me some more consistent performances before I start relying on him, especially in a one-quarterback league. Now, if you play in a two-quarterback league and you want to throw him in there or a super flex league, that, though, that's not that bad. That I won't argue with that much. But in a one-quarterback league, you can even find better streaming options this week. If any reason whatsoever, if the Denver Broncos can get off of their butts and, some, and, cre- and create some more pressure with Bradley Chubb and Von Miller... Trubisky could have a really tough week. Allen Robinson had a great week last week. It was really nice to see that. Would love to see Anthony Miller get going finally, but it might not happen this week. We've got to see Trubisky get better on a week-to-week basis. Maybe it will be this week. I'm not going to I'm not gonna hold my breath, though. Keep an eye on the situation moving forward, but for right now, leave him on your bench. Drew Brees and Jared Goff, both of them are going to be in your lineup this week. We talked about it against the Houston Texans on Monday Night Football. Brees took a little bit to get going. That's all right. We're still going to put him in our lineup. He's still going to have a good week. I expect Jared Goff to be much better this week, though. Yes, he had a pretty decent matchup, I thought, last week. Did end up coming to fruition. That's all right. He gets a he, the Saints defense. He gets the Saints defense this week, and they're really boomer bust. I mean, they could get a couple of picks. They can be in the backfield, causing a lot of havoc. Hold you to 14 points. I mean, they could be really good. But there's other weeks where they can just get burned on some really big plays. I mean, look how quickly Deshaun Watson led that strike down the field to end the game. Uh, I mean, he hit Hopkins real quick, and then Kenny Stills, who'd basically been silent all game. He breaks out right through the middle for a touchdown to to put him ahead. Now, didn't end up mattering because the Saints still won the game. But this is a defense that will give up plays like that. So if Goff and this defense, if Sean McVay can, or Goff in the offense, and Sean McVay can get them moving, get a little bit of a hurry-up tempo and get moving forward, I expect them to put a lot of points up. This could be a really back and forth, a lot of points scored this week. Both of these QBs should be in your lineup. The Carson Wentz to Deshaun Jackson connection looked awesome last week. And that could continue into this week. Now, again, this is an Atlanta team that that really didn't have to worry about Kirk Cousins a lot last week, but a lot of that had to do with the game flow. So I'm not I'm not really going to read that much into that. So with that being said, Carson Wentz is going to be uh, in my lineup still. We'll wait and see. I think this Atlanta Falcons defense can be a lot better than what they were last season, especially now that they're uh, a little bit more healthy even. Um, so let's see what they do on a week-to-week basis before we start making any assumptions on whether or not uh, Kirk Cousins last week is what we're going to see on a weekly basis. I don't think it is. But with Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan I'm going to put back out there. Excellent season last year. He's going to bounce back. Don't worry. He's going to bounce back. He'll still have a good season this year. Keep him in your lineup. Don't panic and drop him or put him on the waivers or put him on your bench just yet. This is a good matchup. It could be a back and forth matchup. But again, kind of the same trend I've talked about with some other quarterbacks. First game at home, the crowd's going to be behind him. That can give that player a little extra motivation, get him ready to roll a little bit more, could help that offense. They're going to want to show out after such a bad performance last week. They are going to want to come out firing on all cylinders this week. Put him in your lineup, reap the rewards later. All right, last matchup of the week, Monday Night Football. The Cleveland Browns tried to get on track against the New York Jets. And originally, I had listed Sam Darnold as a sit this week. But after I thought about it a little bit more, Monday Night Football, extra day to prepare. This is a Cleveland defense that didn't look great last week. Sam Darnold, this this offense is going to continue to grow as the season moves on. So we'll see. I, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm really on the fence about Sam Darnold. 
If you had better options, I would probably pick a better option. And again, it's going to depend. Basically, anybody in this start video that I said that is listed as a start, I would probably go with over Darnold. Now, with that being said, though, if you don't have one of those options and Darnold is your quarterback one or you've got a guy like Kirk Cousins who I've said to sit or maybe you had luck and you ran with Brissett last week or whatever it may be, then at that point, Darnold is a start for me. I still think he could have a decent week. So we're going to keep an eye on that and see what happens. Decent week. I don't think there's much of a ceiling here, though. And then with Baker Mayfield, I know they struggled last week. I know he didn't look good at times, but just stay with him, people. It's going to happen. This team is going to break out. Uh, he's he's going to get much better. Probably over amp. Tried to do a little bit too much. As he grows and and starts to mature a little bit in the league, you're not going to have those things happen. But he wanted to come out and prove a lot of people wrong last week. It didn't happen. That's okay. They're going to get back on track this week against the Jets. I think they're going to win in New York this week. A much better week for Mayfield. Put him in your lineup. Don't run away from him yet. Keep trusting him right now. This defense or this offense is going to get a lot better. Don't worry about that. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, our quarterbacks for week two. Put them in your lineup, put them on your bench, whatever it is. Give you a little bit of a breakdown here on what you could expect moving forward in week two. As always, hit that like button for us. Subscribe to the channel. 60 thousand strong in headliner nation right now over 2,000 subscribers in about 24 hours so the people love what we're doing but we love that you love it so thank you so much for all of your support thanks for hitting the like on the video thanks for commenting we try to get to as many as possible continue to comment continue to ask your questions we will keep helping out as much as we possibly can thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the fantasy headliners i'll catch you all in the next episode have a good one and good luck in week two thanks a lot everybody